and asked to do a quick video to explain um, the problems with underfloor heating and radiator circuits when they're combined on one boiler and there's no hydraulic um, separation provided. So I've got two scenarios that I've drawn up to illustrate the problem. Uh, first scenario, I've um, chosen a boiler with a load upon it of 15 kilowatts at delta T20. So that's going to be running at 10.7 litres per minute. The load is made up of a radiator load of 10 kilowatts at delta T20. So that will require a flow rate of 7.14 litres per minute. And a load of 5 kilowatts on underfloor at delta T7. So that will require a flow rate of 10.2 litres per minute. So the total load flow um, is 17.34 litres per minute. Now the boiler is only going to provide us with 10.7, it's 15 kilowatts. It's matching the heat load. It's running at delta T 20, 10.7. So we're around five litres per minute short. So what are the consequences? Well, our underfloor heating has a pump here. The valve will be fully open in this scenario. I'll explain about that in a bit. Uh, the valve will be fully open. So this pump will be providing a nice uh, negative pressure on this side, which will be meeting the uh, flow from the boiler. So we're going to get a draw here of the required flow rate 10.2, which is going to go around out of the floor handfold and come back. So as it comes back up here, the boiler requires 10.7 and we're only giving 10.2 back. So it will actually draw 0.5 from the radiator circuit. So here we can see we've got 0.5 litres per minute only being drawn on the radiator circuit when we required 7.14 litres per minute. So these radiators in effect would be close to not working, pretty much stalled. Um, so if we move down, here's, a, here's a, an example that exaggerates it further and gives you a, a worse case scenario. So here we've got a total load of 20 kilowatts made of 10 on the radiator and 10 on the underfloor. So it's the same flow rate for the radiator, 7.14 litres per minute. And the flow rate on the underfloor is 20.4 litres per minute. Our boiler is matching the load 20 kilowatts and is providing 14.24. So this time, 14. Sorry, 0.28, sorry. Uh, this time, 14.28 litres will come down. Our underfloor heating system requires 20.4 litres. So it will pull 20.4 by drawing 6.2 from the radiator circuit, 14.28 from the boiler. And the return water from the underfloor heating manifold will arrive at this point, uh, carrying 20.4, of which 14.28 will return to the boiler and 6.12 will continue back around the radiator circuit to come back to satisfy the demand on the underfloor heating. Um, so here we can see we've actually got a reverse flow in the radiators. And um, this is something I come across quite regularly in the winter time under high load conditions uh, when I'm fault finding, get called out to radiators not working. Um, here, here you'd have some heat in the radiators, I guess, because uh, you'd be getting flow rate through um, of the return temperature from the underfloor heating. So why does this happen? So there's a couple of reasons um, for this. One is that typically people will turn the temperature control on the boiler down low to try and get more efficiency from the boiler. Uh, they even used to do this with the old uh, floor standing open fluid boilers to number three. Um, and they still repeat this habit on modern boilers, setting the dial to number three which of course causes low temperature output from the boiler, uh, especially on combination boilers, this one. Um, and the underfloor heating manifolds, typically they've turned the temperature up to 50 or so on there because the underfloor heating isn't warming up quick enough because they've got on off controls and not using a setback. So we end up with a scenario where the boiler's not giving us enough heat to cause the valve to close off and we've got full flow through the underfloor. Now the other reason is modern controls. So now we're fitting uh, open SAM controls, weather compensation, TPI, um, and similar systems. These are deliberately designed to reduce the flow temperature from the boiler 
in order to reduce the output from the emitter and in order to promote more condensing efficiency from the modern boilers. And this leads to exactly the scenario. We've got a low temperature supply. We've got a valve here. And in fact, a lot of these valves uh, from the manufacturers will state that they require a minimum temperature arriving at them, which I think is 70 degrees. Um, I won't argue with anyone if they tell me that's not quite right, but um, I believe it's 70. So we're supplying a temperature in here, maybe 40. Uh, valve's not gonna close, it's looking for 70. Full flow round and we starve these radiators. And the cure is simple. The cure is hydraulic separation. Either um, you can use close couple of T's, you can use a um, low loss header, plate heat exchanger, um, or if any of you know Kimbo better, you could use the Kimi header underneath there um, to create your hydraulic separation. You would then need an additional pump to run the radiator circuit. Um, that way you'd be able to balance the underfloor heating circuit flow rates and the radiator flow rates and the boiler pump, I'm assuming system boiler for this, by the way, uh, the boiler pump would regulate the flow for the boiler to maintain its correct flow rate um, as per the manufacturer's design. And you would get none of those interactions. Now these interactions run on a, on a scale. Um, so as temperatures change and as the system loads change and valves change and TRVs change, all of these flow rates will vary. Um, they will almost never be correct on a system that does not have hydraulic separation. You can do the maths as many ways as you like, but you can only get the correct answer at one condition unless you have a low loss header. So, or hydraulic separation rather, can be, can be any of the forms that I've discussed. So, I hope that helps. I uh, should explain everything. Um, there's a lot more to this than just a short video covers, but this is the uh, key point. So, um, just another thing I'll quickly add. A lot of people are being told to install close coupled T's after the radiator circuit and at the manifold. This is a no-no. Don't do this. You're going to create a full flow bypass. Um, if you put a balancing valve in it to stop it being a full flow bypass, you've still got a bypass. You've still got an open bypass. And this is not the same as hydraulic separation. That bypass will simply drop the available pump head from the radiator circuit and will cause an underflow in the radiator circuit. Now you might not notice these things, the symptoms might not be obvious enough, but they are there. And um, you know, this uh, it's good money for me because I'm going out behind a lot of installers that aren't doing this and uh, going out and putting it in later when the systems don't work. And uh, it seems to me the installers aren't the ones getting the calls. It's the breakdown guys like me that are getting the calls and making the money out of rectifying this. So um, if you want to stop me earning money, do it yourselves, guys. When you're doing the installation, pop your hydraulic separation in there. Make sure your systems are installed correctly and running correctly. And I won't have to keep going around putting them right.